Hello, and welcome to another video. So today I'm doing something just a little tiny bit different. I am going to be talking about everything wrong with the Heroes of Olympus series. Now this is not meant as hate to the book series, to the author, or to anyone who loves the book series because as you all probably know, I love the Heroes of Olympus as well. If you didn't know this, um, you can just check out my 10 favorite book series of all time and that will confirm it for you. But yes, I love Rick Riordan, I love the Percy Jackson in the Olympian series, I definitely love the Heroes of Olympus series as well, but I do understand there are some problems with it. It's completely fine, you know, there's no book series or standalone book that has no errors, that is absolutely perfect. And it doesn't mean you can't still love the books even though you admit it has some flaws, because I still love them and I still see that it has many flaws. Also, before this video starts, I am going to spoil everything that happens in The Lost Hero, Son of Neptune, Mark of Athena, House of Hades, and The Blood of Olympus, so if you hadn't read those yet, um, I mean, you can still watch this if you want to be spoiled. Also, uh, spoilers for Trials of Apollo. So, keep watching uh, if you want. With that out of the way, let's just dive right into this video. Piper being not like other girls, uh, especially in the first book, this kind of like changes a little bit throughout the series, but not a lot. And honestly, I'm kind of sick of Rick writing female characters and them not being able to care about their appearance without sounding vain, you know, and very shallow. Just because anyone wears makeup and cares about their appearance doesn't mean they're vain or shallow. It, by no means, I don't want all of the girls to wear makeup. I, they can do whatever they want. I mean, it's their choice, but just don't like look down on girls who choose to wear makeup and care about their appearance, you know. Jasper, aka the ship between Jason and Piper, is kinda super rushed. I mean, I know Piper had that relationship in her mind because Hera put it in there, but I just see like no chemistry and the fact that they actually end up together and then it's super weird and with everything that happens in the Trials of Apollo is just a big no-no for me. Um, obviously Percy isn't in it, so... <laughs> Jason being Talia's long lost brother kind of seems to me very cheap and like something straight out of like a drama, a telenovela, or a K-drama, you know, like a soap opera, and it's not realistic. It's literally just like in Riverdale, like every week a character finds like a long lost relative. Like, <sighs> stop it. Stop it. And finally, Piper is honestly so freaking powerful. It's basically her that saves um, the world in The Lost Hero and in The Blood of Olympus. Just her with her voice. But she's so powerful that Rick just needed to make her useless during some scenes so the other characters would have something to do as well. So it kind of puts her in like a Scarlet Witch or Allison from the Umbrella Academy situation when literally she could take care of the whole problem. But we need the other characters to do something as well so they make her useless and seem like she doesn't know how to use her powers when we've seen previously that she can control them perfectly so I don't like Piper that much but I acknowledge that she is literally one of the most powerful of the seven and everyone's attention is usually focused on Percy or Jason even Frank who literally has a stick that his life depends on because he's too powerful this isn't really an unpopular opinion, I feel like most of the fandom feels this way. Percy is out of character. You can't change my mind. The phrasal age difference, aka the age difference between Frank and Hazel, is weird. She is about 13 and he is 16, and I don't know about you, but when I was in high school, it would have been weird to see a 16-year-old guy date a 13-year-old girl, but I don't know, maybe that's just me. Also, um, their development is kind of rushed as well. I really wish they could have stayed platonic or maybe had their relationship evolve over time like Persebeth did. So maybe just like start out as friends as they did and instead of ending up together by the end of Son of Neptune, they could have ended up together maybe 
uh, after Blood of Olympus, during the Trials of Apollo, or maybe a little bit after, when they're both a little bit older. I would have really liked their relationship so much more then. I also feel like the friendship between the trio in this book is kind of rushed, because Percy's like, oh, let me introduce you to my other family. Literally, you've known them for a week, and they're already your family? Um, no. Percy would definitely have tried to contact Sally much more than he did in the actual book. He like calls her once, but it's the voicemail and he doesn't try to contact her again. I do not believe this. This man, this boy, loves his mom so much he would have definitely tried something or like at the end he would have tried to get like a phone call at least or write her a letter or something. That's the most unbelievable part of this whole book. That Percy doesn't try harder to contact his mom, who thinks he's been dead for a year. This one is more of a personal opinion, but I think Hazel is also one of the most powerful ones in the Seven, and she is greatly underrated and underused. Literally, she killed a giant all by herself when she was 13, and you're telling me that sometimes she needs help in battle? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. Just know. Annabeth should have been on the freaking cover. You literally could not change my mind. The she is literally the only one in the five books, I think, to get a solo quest, like an actually important one, and she's not on the freaking cover. She's only on one cover. Jason is in three covers. So less than an hour passes between the end of Son of Neptune and the start of Mark of Athena, but it seems like Rick, because it took like more than a year to write and publish, it seems like Rick forgot that it was only a couple of minutes, because the next time Frank uses his powers, he's mastered them completely. And yeah, you could say that not completely, because in the aquarium, uh, he only can turn into a giant goldfish, which is pretty funny, but uh, otherwise he can turn into an animal at will, when like minutes earlier he could barely control it. So I don't really buy that. I will die defending this point. Jason and that brick should have been canon. Percy is way out of character in this book, but especially in the beginning, I definitely do not think that he would have gotten mad well, as mad as Leo as he did in the book because he's a demigod, he's been messed around by the gods, by monsters, by literally even mortals, so he would be able to empathize and he wouldn't get like so mad before even knowing what happened. Like Percy's not that kind of dude. In that scene by the pier where it's Annabeth, Hazel and Piper against Octavian and two of his guards, Hazel could have totally dealt with them without needing Percy's assistance. I get that it was a very cute Percy Beth moment, it was the first time Annabeth says I love you, so I love it as a Percy Beth shipper, but as a reader in general, Hazel controls celestial gold. She could have totally taken care of them. Like, she didn't need Percy's help. Though it was a very cute person about the moment, but she didn't need his help. Like, even without her powers, I feel like there were three against three. They could have totally taken them. Leo is definitely unnecessarily mean to Frank, even though it's just like the way Leo is. But Leo isn't that mean to literally any of the other seven, and they literally fight over a 13 year old girl who Leo just met. <laughs> Stop making guys fight over girls or girls fight over guys. Like, no, just let them be friends. Jason and Percy fighting over who the leader of the Seven is is really stupid because Percy definitely knows that Annabeth is the leader. I mean, she is literally the daughter of the goddess of battle strategy and she's Annabeth. And Jason also knows this because a fact that everyone seems to forget, he spent about a year in Camp Half-Blood with Annabeth, so they know each other. So they definitely know that Annabeth is the leader, so those scenes are there for tension and comedic effect. They are funny, but they're not very realistic. Piper, Leo, Jason, and Annabeth spent a whole year together at Camp Half-Blood, and yet we see no evidence of their friendship in the Mark of Athena. 
Basically, the only time we see Annabeth and Leo together is when they go off to fix something, and that's from someone else's point of view. So we don't even get to see their friendship, and I think that Annabeth and Leo would actually be a great chaotic duo, and I want to see more of that. Or at least Annabeth and Jason, I feel like they would also be good friends. But the only relationship out of these that's explored are the girl and girl one and the boy and boy one. And the Jason and Leo we already saw in the um, Lost Hero and the Annabeth and Piper one. It's like literally show don't tell. They tell us that they became besties when Piper steals Annabeth's bagel or the other way around, I don't remember. And literally they don't interact for that whole book again. And we get no proof of their friendship, they just told us. Give me female friendships. Also, it's never quite clear why Hazel stops having her weird flashbacks. I just want to know why. Was it just because of plot convenience? The foreshadowing of how Annabeth was going to defeat Aragne was also kind of forced. Because I don't think Frank would have stolen anything. Ever. He's a baby. Why didn't Annabeth, our smartest character, take the webs of her legs. I know she was tired, but she's still super smart. Couldn't like Hazel who controls the underground and like can make dirt tunnels, couldn't she have made like a little rock thingy so they could step on it instead of falling into Tartarus? She controls the ground. She could have done something. And Frank, instead of turning into a puny eagle, he could have turned into a dragon, which we know he can do, because he turns into a dragon at the beginning of the book. He could have turned into a dragon and flown them all out of there instead of, like, one by one, because because they wanted to make me feel pain. Nico is outed in this book by Cupid, and that is never cool. None of the five, except Jason, try to be nice to Nico. I mean, obviously Hazel, because they're literally related, but they could have tried harder. Leo's freaking character arc should have been self-love and finding confidence in himself and his abilities and not about falling in love with a girl he's only just met because he is insecure and has issues. I love them so much, but even the first time I read this book, I thought that Perseveth kind of had it a little bit easy in Tartarus. I don't know, I was just expecting them to have a harder time and for them to have more consequences. I mean, I was literally expecting one of them to have to stay behind in Tartarus to close the doors of death. So you can imagine, well, not disappointment, but my surprise when I found out that they escaped kind of like without consequences. I can never like understand like, regardless of how many times I read it, that scene with Hazel and the Mist Labyrinth, which Leo is also in, because I can never really picture it, and I'm just like so confused reading that scene. Leo and Calypso fall in love after knowing each other for a week. Also, I don't like Calypso that much, but I would like her more if her freaking character arc wasn't falling in love with a guy and then leaving her home to go with him. And obviously she wanted to be free, but here's my theory of what could have happened. You know, the thing is that no man can return to the island twice. But what about a woman? Or her getting off the island herself would have also been acceptable. Or just Leo and her being friends. You know, uh, this is a new term in the Riordanverse, a girl and a guy being friends if they're not already in a relationship. Maybe we could try this out. Lucy and Annabeth are out of character. And finally, the scene where Jason tries to reassure Nico that being gay is a-okay is kind of like iffy. It comes to no one's surprise, but I have a whole page dedicated to this one book. There are no Persebeth chapters. Literally, Annabeth gets less chapters than any of the other seven, and they're supposed to be equal. We're supposed to believe that Annabeth confides in Piper about being scared of Percy because they're besties, which we've only seen one other time in the rest of the series. We all know that Annabeth isn't afraid to confront Percy, 
They've literally been friends since they were 12. I think if Annabeth had literally any issue with Percy, she would let that guy know. They're literally best friends. I feel like she should have told Percy. But if she had, we wouldn't have seen it because neither of them get chapters. I genuinely like and enjoy the Reyna and Nico chapters because I, I really love them as characters, but I think they are kind of unnecessary. They don't really advance the plot. We could have learned about what they were doing from someone else. We didn't need to see it firsthand. And also they kind of throw off the pacing of the book. I'm not saying that Reyna and Talia should have ended up together, but I mean, we now know that Reyna is Arrow Ace, so she couldn't, but we didn't know that then. The ending of this book. If you look for the word anticlimactic in the dictionary, there's a description of the final battle in the Blood of Olympus. We literally, as readers and Persephone shippers, only get breadcrumbs of their relationships in the last book, even though we should get how they feel about being in Tartarus for like a month, but we don't. We only get snippets of their relationship, and the first time Percy says I love you, we see it through Piper's point of view. I feel like we were robbed. Once again, I want to say that Fraser would have been a cute couple if they were more developed and if more time had passed, so if they were like 16 and 19 or 18 and 21. Like Percybeth. Because Rick, I don't know about you, but uh, not all of us find our literal soulmate at 13. Like, it's good to be in other relationships. So you can find yourself before you lose yourself in a relationship. I mean, being in the same relationship since you're 13 can't be that healthy. Can it? No. It literally takes them more than a month to get from the United States to Greece. But then, Suze is just like, plot convenience! And slaps them all the other way back to the US. Greeks, let's, um, fight stuff! It's a very funny line and all, but we all know Percy. We heard his amazing speech at the Battle of Manhattan. We know he has something better to say than that, even though it's funny. And also, Annabeth could have said something to rally the troops. Everyone at Camp Half-Blood knows and trusts her. And by this point, Percy has been missing for a year. So, like, there's a lot of new campers that don't know him. Annabeth knows the older campers, the newer campers. She should have been the one to lead them into that battle. I'm sorry, Percy, you don't always have to be the protagonist. It really hurt to say that, but it's true. Solangelo is so freaking cute. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. This is just literally a fact. Gaia gets defeated in about 10 minutes. The ending of the Blood of Olympus is literally the ending of the last hero, but somehow worse. There's also a fake out death, so maybe just like Rick copied and pasted that ending? Because he was lazy. Look, I'm not saying one of the seven should have died, but I'm saying that an important character should have died. Literally, all the hype around the book was that one of the seven would die, and the marketing for Blood of Olympus and the marketing that the book tourists did for it made it sound like it was going to have real life consequences and that one of the seven might die. And you can't promote your book like that and then have no consequences. Literally, the only one that died was Octavian, and nobody gave a shit about him. So. Someone should have died. It, it's hard to like say it because I love them, but it just wasn't realistic. And it didn't live up to anyone's expectations. Also, kind of a hot take, but it was definitely Leo's fault that Jason died in the Trials of Apollo because he cheated death. And to storm or fire, the world must fall. And neither of them died. We know you can't cheat a prophecy. We've been told this like many times throughout the series and that's why he died, so that's really sad. Leo went to pick up his one week girlfriend who he's known only for that one week instead of telling his literal best friends who he's risked his life for several times that he's alive. Literally, they think he's dead for months. They grieve him and then Jason finds out he's alive, never sees him again, and dies. 
because Leo wanted to pick up his girlfriend before letting his best friends know he was alive. Even Leo isn't that selfish, okay? That was way out of character for him. I hate his romantic character, like, I hate it! Percy would have immediately told Sally Jackson that he was alive. Like, after fighting Gaia, he would have been like, I'm off to New York to tell my mom I'm alive, but we don't get to see that. And Sally would have killed him, as I would have, if he were my son. Basically, if you hadn't noticed by now, my biggest complaint with all this series, and this is like a serious complaint, this is what bothers me the most, is that literally all the characters, all the girl and guy characters are paired off together. Like, Persebeth was already a thing, and we literally got five books to get their relationship to develop, but then Jason and Piper have to be a thing by the first book, and then Frank and Hazel have to be a thing by the second book, and by the fourth book, we get Leo, who is the seventh wheel, like, shipped off with Calypso, a girl he just met. Like, they're 15, 16, 13, they don't have to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend all the time. You know, it's okay to be single. It's okay to be a teenager and single. And I feel like that's something Rick doesn't understand. To cut him some slack, I do think that maybe it might be because these books, the Heroes of Olympus books, are targeted more like young adult. So he might have thought that to make them interesting for that demographic, he had to pair off all the people because young adult readers like more romantic relationships than platonic ones. But if I'd written this book, Jason and Piper would be bros. Uh, Leo would be alone, he wouldn't be a selfish idiot, but he'd be friends with Calypso and he would have helped her get back, he would have helped her, and maybe with Percy's help, he could have helped her get back too. Frank and Hazel would be best friends until it was more appropriate for them to be together and they would get more development. And the only couples we would get out of this would be Persebeth, who were already pretty well established, and Solangelo, who wasn't forced a rush because they don't immediately get into a relationship. There's like six months, I think, between uh, when they meet and when they're like significant others in the Trials of Apollo. So they get six months of development, even though we don't see it. And that's what I wish I wish we could get friendships between girls and guys in um, Rick Riordan books without them having to be already paired off with someone else because it seems like you can only have a friend if you already have a boyfriend. Percy and Piper, I think they would get along very well. I think they would get along better than Percy and Jason, for example, and they're like thrust together because they're like bros, but I don't know, I, I would have wanted to see more Piper and Percy. And also Percy and Leo. My final comment is that we missed out on a chaotic and a Beth and Leo friendship and I will never forgive Rick for that. <laughs> oh my god. That was a lot of things, but at the end of the day, we have to accept that all of our favorite books and book series have flaws, and this was me just <sighs> writing them out. I had, <laughs> I didn't know I had so many pent up feelings about this book series until I sat down yesterday <laughs> to write these down, and they just kept flowing out of me, especially with The Blood of Olympus, I was just like, yes, I have so many things to say about this. Like, let me know in the comments if you agree with these, or if you have more unpopular opinions, or if you completely disagree with me. Like, please let me know. Leave a like if you like this video. Please click the bell icon so you get notifications every time I put out a new video every Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. So if you want more from me, you know what to do. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye!